Uh, so welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well and in today's video we're going to be carrying out a comparison between the two multimeters you see there in front of you that are aimed at the solar power market. Um, this is the HT65 from HT Italia, although marketed in the UK by TIS or Test Instrument Solutions and the UT196 there from UNIT. Now just keep the meters at the back at the moment and we'll look at what comes in each of the kits. Each one has a bag with them, a little case. And you can see here, this one from Unity, I guess is more uh, book style to, to open up. And then you've got a separate little compartment here for the manual. And uh, I think it's a certificate of conformity there. And then you've got two compartments in here by a little divider, each with elastic straps, one for the meter there and then the other one for the lead set um, and you do get a little handle with this one to carry uh, the meter around by um, minimal padding in these but it's probably acceptable for these meters uh, and then the HT Italia this opens a bottom hinge if you like and then you've got the lead compartment at the front here um, and then just the empty compartment at the back there no straps to hold the instrument or the leads in uh, on this instrument case, but the padding's pretty much comparable, I would say, between the two cases. Um, and this one here, again, you've got the instruction manual at the back, um, but you do get a certificate of calibration with this unit that you don't get with the UNI-T, so that's an advantage that you see with the HT Italia unit here. So just spaced everything out here, and you can see these are the accessories that you get with the HT65 and then just the lead set that you get with the UT196. Um, both sets of leads are the same, the probes are molded onto the ends of the cable so you, you can't uh, take them off and put standard 4mm accessories on these. Um, however, with the leads for the HT65 here, cap does remove and you can put standard 4mm accessories which are on the adapter at the front here and these are the standard crop clips that come with them and you can see they fit all okay no problems uh, what you do see with these leads one thing that I don't quite like um, is that this adapter unscrews uh, so you do end up getting a, a bit of a bad connection at times or a loose connection uh, I should say when you've got these accessories on they do tend to undo the little adapters there um, they are said you get prop clips with this and you also get a thermocouple with the HT65 that you don't get with the UT196 along with the adapter to plug it into the connections there at the bottom. Um, now I said uh, accessories don't come with this, there are accessories available because again the cap comes off on the leads for the UT196 and uh, you can get these accessories that from Fluke that have the little pro tip connector inside them so you can plug this in and they do plug on uh, they do connect electrically but mechanically you can see they're not a very snug fit uh, around the probe tip there but they, they will work in that respect to show you what they look like on the on a fluke lead you can see it's all snug around the, the probe tip there and fits uh, nice and tight uh, whereas you don't get the same fit with the uh, UT196 leads uh, let's take you out of the way, compare uh, the red and the black leads to each other. So the black leads from HT65, red leads from UT196. And then you can see there the pro tips together there. And just put them out. And there, what are we looking at? Uh, forget them in frame. 20-25 uh, centimeters difference between the, the leads there. Yeah, so the leads on the HT65 are a little bit longer. Uh, so we've got our Mega here. Uh, let's do the HT65 leads first. Plug them in together. So we're set to 1000 volts. Uh, the instruments can read 1500 volts and 1700 volts. So uh, that should be a guess. So we've got 45 giga ohms uh, on 1018 volts being injected there. Uh, if we grab hold of them. You can see they do drop quite quickly on these leads here. Uh, okay, uh, just knock him off. Um, plug him and then drop them to one side. Let's coil them up together. 
And then we'll go again. And you can see we're straight over 200 gig ohms on the leads for the UT196. And if I uh, move them around a bit, they do drop 20 gig ohms, 17. Uh, they're not uh, nowhere near the, the 3 gig ohms that these drop down to. And again, it does rise quite quickly back up to 200 gig ohms. So as long as you don't trap these leads, they are fine. Uh, but they seem to be a little bit better quality lead from Unity than they do from the HT Italia unit. Um, so turn him off there. So that's most of the stuff out of the way. We can look a little bit closer at the actual instruments themselves. Uh, the HT65 here, so this is marketed in the UK by Test Instrument Solutions. It is apparently available from Electrical Factors. Well, I've struggled to get a price for this. There's some prices for it on eBay from suppliers within the UK. Uh, and it's coming in at about £190. In contrast, the UT196 here is available Amazon, eBay in the UK. You can get it AliExpress as well. Um, I've seen it in quite price range from £130 is about the cheapest I could find it, all the way up to £240. Um, so quite a price spread for the UT196 that you don't see with the HT65. So moving on to our two instruments, I just put this graphic up here. Uh, this is the comparison of the functions that are available for the actual instrument. Uh, HT65 have got a total of 15 functions and UT196 we've got 18 functions. Uh, if we just have a quick run down them, uh, again you can see obviously AC volts of frequency across both units. You don't get a duty cycle on the UT196 if that interests you. Um, low pass filter is available on the UT196 but not the HT65. Uh, low Z or low input impedance function is on the HT65 but not on the UT196. DC millivolts and AC millivolts. Uh, you do get this uh, as a specific function on the UT196. Now you do see DC millivolts on the HT65, but it's part of the shared function within the DC. It's just an extra range. AC DC volt function is available on the Unity, but not on the HT65. Um, AC current on both units, DC current on HT65 only. That's as a function of the clamp meter. You could obviously use a clamp meter with the UT196, but you'd have to put it as a millivolt measurement and then do the conversion factor yourself. Uh, the HT65 have temperature function, both in degrees C and degrees F, but the UT196 doesn't have it. UNI-T, so he has min, max and a peak function that you don't see on the HT65. Uh, both units have a hold, both units have a backlight, but only the UT196 has a torch. And that's the basic functionality across them. Uh, move on to this graphic, and this splits the differences down into more technical terms for the common functions across both the units. So the biggest difference that you'll see with this is the UT196 is a 6,000 count multimeter, whereas the HT65 is a 4,000 count. So you get wider ranges on the UT196 than you do on the HT65. And as you go down them, you can actually see you get pretty much better tolerance in the vast majority of them as well. So if you look at the top there at AC volts, you can measure up to 1500 volts on the UT196 with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.8%, whereas the HT65, you can read up to 1000 volts. You've got no specific AC millivolt function on the HT65, and the accuracy spread is 1.5% to 2%. Uh, DC millivolts, a bit better on the range 400 millivolts to 1500 volts with a 1.2% to 1.5% accuracy on the HT65. That's against uh, 600 millivolts up to 1700 volts on the UT196 and again you see 0.2%, 0.5% for the accuracies, uh, much better accuracy. Um, AC current 30 amps to 3000 amps, they're both pretty much the same there. Uh, resistance up to 40 mega ohms on the HT65, again 1% to 2%, so quite a high tolerance on that against up to 60 mega ohms on the UT196 and 0.8% uh, up to 2.5%, um, so a slightly worse accuracy for some of the ranges on the UT196. So we'll look at the actual measurements that I made 
Um, so these are the tests that I actually did, the results of them. I've averaged it out for each of the functions there. And you can see that both on paper and in practice, UT196 is a pretty much a much more accurate instrument. Those bottom five sets of bars there, they're the actual functions for DC voltage, AC voltage, resistance, capacitance, and AC current. And then at the top there, those two bars, that's the overall accuracy. And to calculate the overall accuracy, I've actually made all those readings for each of the ranges a positive value. Um, and you see that uh, we're a circa 1% overall accuracy for the HT65 against 0.27% for the UT1961 so it wins pretty much hands down there really. So that's that bit out of the way we'll take a quick look at the instruments themselves and then we'll open up to see what they're like inside. Obviously physically the HT65 is a slightly smaller instrument but that does mean that the display is quite a bit smaller as well. In actual fact if I take the SG-003 that I've been uh, playing around with over a lot of the last few videos. Let's turn them all on so you can see there. And the actual display is pretty much the same size as the SG-003A for the HG65 there. So uh, not much is in it, whereas you go against the UT there uh, quite a bit, quite a bit larger, certainly across in width. Um, and you can see we've got a backlight there, we've also got a backlight here for the UT196, perhaps can't tell that quite so well. Um, you do see that the backlight on the HT65 does go off a lot quicker than it does on the UT196, bound for around about 60 seconds, probably about 20 seconds for the HT65 there. Um, similar sort of layout for the instruments, you've obviously got the rotary function switches for both of them. This is a, a much better clack to it than the Unity unit does have. It feels like it's probably the ball bearing and spring type there, whereas this is more the plastic spring type. Um, you can't really hear it that well. And obviously you get the beep every time you change function on the UT196, whereas the HT65 is uh, a little bit quieter. Um, selection for the top of the relative modes, uh, obviously peak over there. Uh, range and mode function is select on the UT196 so obviously fewer buttons on the HT65 for selecting the auxiliary functions than you do see on the UT196. Down here at the bottom with the jacks you've got the majority of the functions on the right hand side here and the current function on the left hand side. On the HT65 you only have the two bottom jacks that gets all the functionality of those two jacks there around the back, uh, obviously both have a tilt stand to them, um, we've said this in the video, it does uh, doesn't lock shut really on the Uni T unit, whereas on the HT65 it is doing no problems. Um, you have got the extra clip here to hang off if you want to, and the torch there at the back, whereas you don't have any of that with the HT65. You do have the little slot here to put a magnet lead through or something like that, magnet strap through. Uh, probe holders in both of the units there, exactly the same. Um, so if we take a look inside the units, um, you can see both of them have the battery compartment at the back for the HT65 here, it's a penny slot in there to go through 180 and then it just lifts off and comes out. Um, you can see here 9 volt battery PP3 with the little connector on there that just unplugs and that gets you into that one. Um, excuse me, because the UT196 takes a little bit longer to get into. We've got five screws here um, that hold this uh, in place. And now the screws are machine screws and they are captive within the battery compartment lid. So that's all well and good. Uh, come on, there we go. Um, so there's the lid off for that. Uh, you can see on the back here we've got the Intertech Independent Laboratory Inspection label on the back here, along with the Independent UKCA as well. On the uh, HG65 we just have the UKCA label down the bottom there. Um, so that has an extra valid, independent validation to it on the 
UT196 and you can see that the battery has already tried to escape so as, instead of the battery style clip you just have the spring prongs coming off the PCB that this plugs onto and both of these units do work off of PP3s this particular one is a EBL lithium ion rechargeable one uh, both meters work off of this so these are around about 8.4 volts so less than the 9 volts of a standard alkaline PP3 uh, but both units seem to work quite well off of them so you can see six screws there to open up the uni T unit um, you can see oh wow they are actually they're actually machine screws as well and captivated inside uh, no shielding whatsoever on the back of the instrument on the back of the case but if we look we have got shielding around a section of the components on the board which is rather nice isn't it um, and then if we look at the input so the input jacks are screwed in here and what we're more or less interested in especially being able to read up to 1700 volts DC is uh, our protection which we have plenty of kicking in here, uh, certainly some more PTCs, uh, plenty of PTCs across each one, so this is so, it looks like we've got PTCs for our uh, current clamp input and separate ones for our voltage input as well, and then we've got MOVs on common there going across and going across there, so we've got a series of MOVs going there going across the voltage input so plenty of input protection. Uh, we could well have some transistor clamps up here as well. Okay, and pretty clean PCB. So not bad there at all. Let's put that to one side and we'll open up the HT Italia unit. Um, change my screwdriver a bit. Okay, so we get into our HT65. Again, there is no shielding on the back here. Uh, the screws, they can escape if you uh, take them to bits there. We've just got a little rubber blank there for the two leads for the battery clip and then they're soldered direct on, although they are through the PCB and then back on themselves so it looks like they are clamped. Uh, main IC is cobbed there, but we want to look at input protection, don't we? Um, again, as per the UT196, they are screwed onto the jacks, no problems. And um, We've got one, two, three, four PTCs and two gas discharge tubes. I uh, can't quite tell, probably transistor clamps up there as well. Okay, so there's your two boards there that you can see on these units. Um, looks like quite a bit more input protection on the UT196 in comparison to the HT65 there. And obviously we do have the shielding up here on the UT196. Um, Okay, so that's the inside of the units. They're both clean, uh, pretty good. Okay, so we've opened up the units as far as we can get now. These are the front halves of the clamshells for each of the units. Um, again, pretty clean inside. You can see the contact arrangement for each of the function switches. I can't strip the function switches out any further than you can see them there. Um, but they are looking pretty good condition, all clean. No real problems with them. Um, you've got the standard contact pads in for the HT65 here for these uh, buttons here for the uh, standard kind of carbon contact pad that goes onto the PCB tracks for the HT65 there and for this one it's like it's got its own enclosure so I presume they're the same underneath but it's all housed within this and then you've got a bit of ribbon cable coming over to attach to the PCB um, both of the units you do have this slot in here that makes up with the bottom half for actually uh, providing some flash over protection to keep the uh, gubbins within the meter and then it's even more prominent on the HT65 you can see it there much more deeper flange to cross over and keep any uh, garbage inside it um, quick look at the actual PCBs we want to go this side now really don't we um, so there's the front side we've seen the other side already um, and then both the units, pretty much similar sort of build really, there's nothing on this side whatsoever. Uh, you can see some greasing on the PCB tracks here for the function switch on the UT196. Uh, I can't see that 
on the HT65 doesn't appear to be present um, but other than that they're both clean builds um, perhaps a little bit of flux on the HT65 but not much here and there yeah so we'll zoom into a close up on the two boards there to finish this off with um, you can see they're very similar to one another really um, I guess if I was going to be making a decision I would probably say the UT196 here has a slightly better build you've got the prongs here for the connector onto the battery instead of the PP3 clip on the HT65 which isn't always the most robust of things you appear to have more PTCs and more MOVs for the input protection plus the isolation slot there on the UT196 and of course we've got the shielding over the main uh, HD converter and uh, processor unit there which you don't get any of that on the HT65 input protection is um, four PTCs and the two gas discharge tubes there predominantly so I think coupled with the increased functionality that you see with the UT196 although that does have some quirks especially with the uh, peak mode that only works on AC volts I'll probably plummet more towards the UT196 than I would for the HT65 and obviously that's also including the price that if you shop around at this moment in time I can get the UT196 for a better price than I can for the HT65 certainly in the UK but that's just my opinion that was going to be the end of the video however I just have this last bit to add as when I was rebuilding this unit we seem to have solved the issue with the tilt stand here um, remember that it used to flop down and wouldn't lock in place uh, and now it does uh, I'm not 100% sure why you get the same effect if I loosen this screw off but it's got to be loosened a fair bit you can see it's not doing anything there and you see it starts to go and there you see um, but that's pretty loose I wouldn't have thought I'd have had it that loose um, but there you go unless there was something inside that was uh, blocking it or and stopping it from closing up uh, it's not the battery the battery seems to sit perfectly okay uh, so I'm not 100% sure what it was but the tilt stand issue has been solved with this by making sure that the top screw is being done up tight enough so that will be the end of the video now thanks for watching hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next video